Hey everyone, this is Stefan from Bite the Bytes. In this video, I'm going to show you, or let's say briefly show you the uh, rivers uh, features in Word Creator, the river layers. And yeah, it's a really huge feature actually, um, very complicated, but it's also made pretty simple and easy for you. Okay, so let's go to the shape layers here, click the plus icon and add the rivers layer. So um, what's going to happen here? Um, you won't see the rivers right now because we need to adjust a little bit because the filter is uh, changing a bit too much, but we can make that pretty much quickly simple as you can see here. Without the filters, this would be the river itself. We can also enable the filters here, click on edit, and we can see how the, how the, how the river system was generated. So to make this visible, um, better on this terrain, specifically on this terrain, because the filter is changing too much. Um, we need to adjust a little bit the depth value here. As you can see, I'm just adjusting. Let's take the depth here a, into something like this here. And then we can see the river as it flows. So let's check the symbols. Um, these ones with a star means these are springs. And these are here simple notes. You can move the springs. You can also move the notes and adjust the river um, depending yeah, to your needs. Each of these things also has um, yeah, specific options. So, so if you, for example, if you click the spring here, you can see um, there is a value, something like called flow. You have a river type that is generated and you can adjust further values um, of the river itself. But it doesn't mean it, it's not adjusting everything. It adjusts one um, just uh, from one node to another node because each of these nodes has, has these settings. So I always think of a river like a, um, like a tree system. <clears throat> so you have um, somewhere a root, which would be the spring. And from there on, um, the river is um, generated, like water is streaming on the terrain, is flowing on the terrain. And um, yeah, different flows might connect to to one single flow and those can move on and any further flow that is around that flow might connect to that uh, huge flow and those might you know split up and all these things typical for rivers um, <clears throat> for example if i'm adjusting the flow value here it means there's a lot more water coming from the spring into the river and with that everything um, after that node will change and adapt okay so you can control this at any point so it means we can do a flow multiplier here. We'll give you more flow from this point up to that, but it's just a flow multiplier. The original flow is still set here. Um, another option that you can have is like what, um, yeah, about uh, changing the river type. So for example, if I have a river like, let's take, oh, let's take that one here. If I change the river type of this node, we can see we have a zigzag here. We can change it to a mountain steep it will um, quickly change the type of the river because the, the flow of a mountain steep river looks different than compared to a mountain river or a gently sloped river or to a valley river or a braided or multi-threaded floodplain meandering in a flat. Okay, that's really, um, it really depends on. Well Creator is generating all these automatically for you. Um, each time you add a river or you press, uh, or you press a river, um, reverse button here, like this. Um, <clears throat> and these settings are set up automatically depending on the terrain, the underground, um, the slopes and all this, okay? So it really tries to create a um, realistic looking flow for your rivers. Now, um, there are a few more options here, like you could anytime place a new spring. You can just check this box here where it said add a spring using the left shift key and uh, uh, press the left mouse button. So if we, for example, add a uh, spring over here, um, we can select it and click here generate stream and World Creator is generating a stream to the next possible flow. Um, it doesn't have to connect actually. It might connect. It really depends if the terrain allows it to connect at all. Um, yeah, so there are also a few more things. You could place multiple springs as much as you want and yeah, build from springs and it will create the springs and the flows automatically for your system. Okay, so there are a few more settings here. Like you could, for, uh, for example, you could flatten out a river entirely. So if you click the last node, which would be the river end, theoretically the river end, you could do a flatten upstream. How that would look like? Um, 
it's like if I click this one, everything is flattened uh, to one single plane. This might be interesting for very um, flat areas only. Um, this is m more for design reasons. And also when you're moving these nodes, you can see that Work Creator is adapting the terrain around that node. Okay, so it tries to, uh, it really uh, still tries to keep the river and the surrounding as realistic as only possible. Um, you may also, um, as you can see here, you can also rotate nodes. You can also, um, yeah, increase the, um, the elevation of a node because if we're moving the spring, it goes into the terrain. We could also just um, move it up and down, giving you different options to manipulate the elevation of that spring here and adjust it. Okay, now um, let's take a look at these values here. I'm going to rebuild the original one here. And now what I want to do is I want a bit more control about the about the valley and the river itself. So we actually have um, the river shape, which is controlled with these values here. And we have the valley shape. The valley shape is all around, is everything around the river. Um, for example, if I'm reducing the width here, you can see that how World Creator is adapting the terrain because this is like this mountain here if i increase the width of the valley means okay we need to remove a little bit of that mountain so we have more flat areas around the river itself um yeah maybe to create cities and all that uh, stuff you can also increase or decrease the depth so let's make the depth a little bit larger here so the valley goes now downwards or stays at the original value. You can control the wall shape, the breakup, the flood pane, and all these things. You may even control the level step uh, uh, for the river. If, if you reduce them entirely, then there's actually no valley around. So it's not, it, it doesn't matter if you move the width values here or not. The same would apply if you set this to original value and just reduce the width here. Now the same techniques also apply to the shape itself. Here you can control the shape. You could, for example, make it wider or even a bit more, yeah, make it thin, yeah, depending on the filters. Always remind the filters are changing. So this is not the water, um, the water surface that you see here. This is the river ground, the river bed. Um, you can increase the depth of the river, the curve, the um, repetition and all this. And with these sliders, you can control the shape a little bit even more because these are just reflecting the um, resolution as mentioned in the, in the filters um, tutorial. So if I want to have a very accurate river like this, I could do it like this. And I can mix in these several things here to make the shape a little bit more different and accurate, depending on what exactly I want to do, okay? So um, there's not just one single rule to follow. Um, here you have a really high adjustable um, river system allowing you a lot in designing your rivers. Okay, then also some important values above here. The most important would be like the branching here. If you increase the branching and you do a um, rebuild of the rivers, then the system is going to create more springs because the branching is uh, increasing. So it might change a lot on your terrain if you just increase these values here. Um, yeah, same for the, uh, for the minimum flow. Um, yeah, um, I would suggest to just to try them out and see exactly what, they, what they're doing. The next would be like, okay, let's see how we can color our, our river. Now that would be pretty easy. So we're adding a color like this um, bluish color here. And let me take this out. We're adding that blue color here and we're just drag and drop that river on that color. So what's happening here is we already can see that it colors the river itself and the surrounding, which would be the valley. So if you want to change that, you would go here to rivers. For example, if you don't want the valley to be colored at all, remove the valley strength. If you want to reduce a little bit the blending of the river coloring, use these values. And with that, you can color the valley. You can apply textures to the valley. You can you can do exactly the same things that we that you can do for all distributions, applying effects, uh, limit them to slopes and all these values, okay? So um, there are no limitations. You can even apply gradients to the rivers, um, texture substance materials, um, just to make them looking as you want. Okay, so that's it for the rivers. It's a really powerful um, system 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed and um, stay safe and have a great day. Bye-bye.